Well, remember the good old days when the worst thing a woke corporation could do to you was try to sell you products that were mysteriously imbued with magical values like racial equality and environmental sustainability. Those were the days. If you weren't incl inclined to fall for woke advertising, there were usually other options based on price and quality available instead. But now all major corporations are being increasingly run by graduates of the same woke MBA courses and the potential for them to collectively enforce their agenda is increasing by the day. Where once big companies thought they could guilt trip you into buying their products with woke values, now they openly want to punish you for not doing so. This is what PayPal revealed on the weekend when it published a policy to fine customers $2,500 for spreading so-called misinformation on social media. PayPal later said the notice was published by mistake and that the company never intended to follow through with it. Sure it wasn't. It's not as if this doesn't follow a pattern. As I reported last month, PayPal recently banned the account of Gays Against Groomers, a group who openly objected to the sexualization of children by transgender activists. It also recently cancelled the personal account of conservative British writer Toby Young and two of his other accounts, The Free Speech Union and The Daily Skeptic. Those accounts were reopened when senior politicians got behind his cause. Ordinary people don't have that sort of cavalry to back them up, which makes this latest development in crony capitalism very frightening. How frightening? Let's ask Alexandra Marshall from The Spectator Australia. Alexandra, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Alexandra, the last time PayPal punished a conservative group, you advised right here on this show your centre-right followers not to cancel their accounts in protest because then only left-wing organisations would be able to benefit from PayPal's considerably uh, good services. But surely, Alexandra, PayPal has gone too far this time. So I almost issued you with an apology in a recent Spectator article, but I've returned to my original foundation before I talk about that, just to do with where we are now. Well, exactly what I said was going to happen has happened. All the young conservative writers have lost their monthly and weekly subscriptions from all their users, and so they're down. The income they used to have is gone. And a lot of them are already walking back to the, the you know, jobs at Coles and whatever else because they cannot make money out of writing anymore. They've lost too much from this mass boycott of PayPal, which is what I warned would happen. There's no government grants for conservative writers. There's no special programs for them. Most publications will not publish them. So if there's no community support, no PayPal, there's no conservative writers. So that's why I didn't issue with you with an apology. But what I almost did is when PayPal said we're going to fine you for wrong think, that's a risk to your own personal finances. It's essentially theft. And no matter how much I like conservative writers, I mean, I'm one of them, you can't have a company thieving from your bank account thousands of dollars because you posted a tweet they don't like. And that's essentially what they came out and said. And now the fact checkers are like, sorry, it's fake news. They never intended to take money going, hang on a second. The notice was out there for a good week. I mean, I got sent it in the email. And uh, they only took it down when it became a trending news item. So I'd say that that's less of a mistake and more of a, oh, we're just kidding. 